it starts with the vision. You cannot do what you cannot see. I mean, see with your mind's eye. The most surefire way is to make six figures as a graphic designer is to get a job. <laughs> For me, it was like mind blowing. Like I'm a kid from the trailer parks of Mississippi and now I got one of the largest snack companies in the world asking me to stay to work for them and tell how many hours I can give them a week. It's all about relationships. You gotta build those. You're not gonna make six figures if you don't build relationships, period, hands down. Foot in the door projects will help you get to that six figure mark by building those relationships. Welcome to the Design Go Podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Sargent Sr. Listen, man, I'm super excited to be back today. And this episode is all about making that moolah, all right? Making the bag with graphic design. Listen, it's 2024, brand new year. We're in January. I know everybody has made their vision boards by now. You've made your New Year's resolutions by now. And I'm sure at the top of that list is making more money, right? You want to get to the bag more in 2024. Uh, oh, I like that. Get to the bag more in 2024. Yeah, make more in 2024. I like that. So um, I was just literally just on my way home and I was just thinking about what are the top videos that I need to make for 2024? And this was the first one on the list. If one of your New Year's resolutions and goals is to make six figures from graphic design, um, my first question would be, why do you want to make six figures? Do you actually need to make six figures? You know, I think a lot of times people get caught up in the gram and get caught up in what they see other people doing. You know, my algorithm now is just filled with people talking about money, 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 money all of the time. And yes, I know we got to have it. You know, you need it to survive. You need it to live. You need it to you know, use it as a tool and as a resource. But I want you to really think about how you think about money, right? Are you thinking about money in a way that keeps you in bondage? Are you thinking about money in a way that is is creating fear and creating anxiety in you? Money making is really all about the mindset. You literally can make money from, you know, selling rulers. I just happen to have a ruler on my desk. I'm a designer, right? I'm an artist. Um, you can make money from anything, right? It's not hard to make money. It's not hard to make six figures, but what it can be difficult is making the shift in your mind that will allow you to become the person who's capable of making six figures and beyond or four figures or five figures, whatever your mark is. So my question to you is, do you really need to make six figures or is five figures, you know, a year? Okay. For you, is that enough for you? So if someone were to come to me and say, hey, Courtney, how do I make six figures as a graphic designer? Everything that I'm about to tell you is what I would tell that person. So I'm just we're just going to act like you just asked me that question. And, and this is you know, this is my answer. So my first question would be, do you really need six figures? What does your paradise life look like? And when I say paradise life, your paradise life is the most ideal euphoric life that you can dream of in your mind. How much money are you making in this dream paradise euphoric life? Um, how many hours are you working per week? Uh, how much time are you spending with your family versus how much time you're spending working? Do you dream about sitting at your desk for 10 to 12 hours a day? Or do you dream about working for eight hours a day? Do you dream about working for four hours a day? Like you got to have this vision in your mind. And every year I create a vision board. I don't do New Year's resolutions. I just right behind the camera is my vision board. And so I don't do New Year's resolutions, but I do put things on my vision board that I want to accomplish either that year or, you know, short term, long term. I encourage you to make a vision board for this new year. And I know this this video is about making money, but it starts with the vision. You cannot do what you cannot see. And I don't mean see with your physical eyes. I mean, see with your mind's eye. You can't do anything if you don't first see it in your mind's eye. And so you have to visualize that. And so you have to be very, very specific. So if that is six figures, then great. I can teach you how to make six figures on the Design Go podcast. I teach the art and the business of design, all things design. I've been in this industry for 15 years, you know, so nothing is really a mystery to me at this point. And so I can teach you that. But what is a lot of times what's hard to teach is the mental part. And so you got to get the mental part right. And sometimes, 
you know, you got to go back and and reevaluate your relationship with money as well. So uh, I'll talk about that in, in another video because that's very, very applicable to making six figures. Right. It's easy to make money, but sometimes it's hard to lay new pipes in your, you know, in your spiritual being. You know what I'm saying? I won't get too deep on you. But when it when it comes to making six figures as a graphic designer, there are a lot of things that you can actually do. So one of the, the easiest, I would say, and the most surefire ways to make six figures as a graphic designer is to get a job, <laughs> to get a corporate job. Now, listen, I know that we live in this this entrepreneur society, this hustle culture, this freelance culture, which I love it. It's really great. Now, I don't love the hustle culture, but I do love the entrepreneurial culture. And so I know we live in that and everything is like geared towards, you know, you being your own boss. And that's really great. I'm a big proponent of being your own boss. But you have to understand that everybody's not cut out to be an entrepreneur. That's just the reality of it. Like the bosses have to have employees. And if you're an employee, that's OK. It is OK to be an employee. Like don't allow society and other people to pressure you into thinking that you have to be an entrepreneur because you don't. You can get a job. Listen, the median graphic designer job pays sixty seven thousand dollars a year. That's a lot of money, especially like if you're in your 20s, your early 30s, like that is good money. Like that's the middle of the road. Now, I live in Texas and of course it depends on, you know, where you live. Today I live in Texas. Now, I did live in Mississippi. That's where I was born and raised. And to tell you just a little bit about my story, um, my first graphic designer job really wasn't a job. It was kind of like an internship, it, you know, basically it was for my church. And this is actually how I got started. I got started as a designer doing things for my church. And that was my first quote unquote job. I didn't get paid for it, but that was my job. Um, I was a graphic designer at church. Um, the tech guy at the church was like, Hey, you know, we need this, you know, can you help out? And I'm like, Hey, I would love to help out. Please let me help out. Like teach me how to do this. And so he gave me a free trial copy of Adobe Dreamweaver and Adobe Photoshop. And I got bit by the bug and I've been in it ever since. And it's been almost 15 years since then. And so that's how I got started in graphic design. And I started my first business also in 2009. It was called Dominion Artistry. And uh, <laughs> I love that name still, but the name comes from, um, I just believe like in the Bible, there's a scripture where it says that God created man to dominate the earth. And so I wanted to dominate the mountain of artistry and use my art to you know, make a difference in the world. And so I just named my freelance business Dominion Artistry. And I later changed it to Sergeant Branding Firm. So that was like my first non paying job. And then my first actual paying job was at uh, a newspaper company in Tupelo, Mississippi. Again, that's where I'm from. So I was a, a graphic designer there and I was a web designer there. And then I left that company to work at a nonprofit organization. And interestingly enough, in between those two jobs, I was planning to move to Texas with my wife, uh, but it just didn't work out at the time. So we ended up staying. Um, and this company was like, hey, we heard y'all are moving to Texas. Will you stay and we'll give you a job? And we're like, hell yeah. Yeah, I'll stay. Like they was like, well, what salary do you want to make? And at the time, I think it was sixty five thousand a year. So this was in. Let's see, merit 2009. So this was around 2012. Actually, it was around 2012, 2013. We both started working at this nonprofit organization. I came on as a graphic designer. My wife came on as a radio producer because um, the nonprofit organization had an arm like a radio arm. And so she was a producer. I was a designer, worked in a marketing department, designed graphics for the radio shows and stuff. And then I eventually got on radio and I was on live radio for about two and a half years. And then in 2016, we moved from Mississippi to Texas. And then in Texas, I started working at like just different temp companies. Creative Circle was the agency that I worked through and I would they just placed me at different corporations as a graphic designer, visual designer, web designer. So I finally landed at a tech company 
Um, and that was a really, really great job and a great position. And by that time, I think my salary was, I think it was 70,000. And I love that job. I was a creative director there. So like a graphic designer, but then I had other people underneath me. And so from that company, I got laid off four days after my daughter was born in 2017. And then from there, I went full-time entrepreneurship for a stint. Because like at the time, this was when Hurricane Harvey hit the coast in Texas and a lot of companies shut down and it was it was a disaster. And so they're like, hey, we got to let you guys go because, you know, our business has taken a hit. And so, you know, I'm in the boardroom, like kind of smiling and my boss is sitting next to me and she's like crying her eyes out. But I'm just sitting up there like smiling, like in my mind, I'm thinking this is my chance. This is my chance, my opportunity to go full-time graphic designer. So this will be the second time that I will be full-time because I was full-time at for a short stint in Mississippi. And so I went full-time graphic designer, web designer in my own business, Sergeant Branding Firm. That was the name of it at the time. It's still the name of it. And I went real strong for like a year, I would say a year and a half maybe. And I got burned out. I got really, really burned out. I got frustrated because my business wasn't progressing the way I wanted it to. And so I decided, you know what? Forget this. I'm going back to corporate America. So I got a job at a real estate company in corporate America. Um, I worked there as a graphic designer under actually one of the best bosses I've ever had. Her name is Nikki. Shout out to Nikki. If you see this, our boss was just such a jerk. I hated the job. He made it so unbearable that I actually left. And I quit that job and I went to work at Frito-Lay, which was the last company that I worked for before uh, going full-time entrepreneurship. So Frito-Lay is based in Plano, Texas, about 15 minutes away from where I live. And I was a visual designer as an uh, outside contractor for Frito-Lay. And I worked there for a little over a year. I just made my mark in that company so much. And in that department that they were like, hey, we don't want you to leave. Cause I told him like, Hey, I, you know, I got this other business. I have my freelance and it's really picking up and, you know, I'm feeling like it's time for me to kind of branch out on my own again. And they're like, Hey, we love working with you. We love having you on the team. Will you stay and just tell us how many hours per week you can give us? And for me, it was like mind blowing. Like I'm a kid from the trailer parks of Mississippi. And now I got the, one of the largest snack companies in the world, asking me to stay to work for them and tell me how many hours I can give them a week. And I was just mind blown. So I stayed for a little bit longer and eventually it got to the point where I just, I couldn't do it anymore. I had to just, I had to break ties and break clean. Love those people at Frito-Lay. That was the best team I ever worked for. And I went back to full-time entrepreneurship and I've been full-time ever since then. That was, that's kind of my story as a graphic designer. Went a little bit longer than I wanted to, but that's, you know, from the beginning up to where I am today. And at Frito-Lay, I think I was making, you know, right at six figures and then coupled with my freelance business, because I, I always had clients like ever since Mississippi working at that nonprofit organization, I had clients ever since then. I've always had my freelance business down throughout the years while I worked my corporate job. And there's nothing wrong with having a job. Don't be prideful. Don't think that having a job, you know, makes you less of an entrepreneur or less of a boss or a business owner. Man, forget that. At the end of the day, you got to do what's best for your family and do what's best for your situation because that's all that matters. I would say that is the number one way that you can make six figures as a graphic designer. Pretty surefire way. But I would also recommend that you have the job or do something else too. So another way that you can make six figures is to be an entrepreneur, be a freelancer and have retainer clients. So retainer clients, if you if you're not um, if you're not familiar with retainers, a retainer is basically where someone pays you a set amount of money every month for you delivering design services for them. You know what those design services are they know how much they're paying you every month and that's money that you can count on. And so let's say if you have a retainer for $1,200 a month with one client and you got another one for $3,000 a month with another client 
You can also have small retainers for, for clients that are like 400, 250, 500 here, 1,000 there. And you can like build up these retainer clients and before you know it, you're making like $8,000, $9,000 a month, which is really great. And that'll get you to that six figure mark. Another way that you can make six figures is with freelancer websites like Upwork and Fiverr. Now, I'm not really a big fan of doing this because this is really a hustle. Like it, it takes a special type of person to be able to get on Upwork and Fiverr and apply to bids or you apply to bids on Upwork. And it takes a really special type of grind and hustle to be able to get on Upwork every day to, you know, to go out there and get after the jobs. But that's, you know, as an entrepreneur, that's what it takes. Like it takes that type of person. And again, everybody's not built for this. Everybody's not made to be an entrepreneur. Everyone's not made to be a freelancer. And it's OK if you're not. Um, but if you are, that's another way that you can get to that six figure mark. Uh, you know what? Uh, another another tactic that you can use to make six figures and to kind of help fill the gaps somewhere is to do foot in the door projects. So I call foot in the door projects. Now, foot in the door projects are basically like either free or close to free projects just to get your foot in the door. And then once you get your foot in the door with the client, then you can offer them a lot more services and you can offer them different things. So let's say that, you know, as a graphic designer, my main service is logo design, like branding design, right? Like a whole branding package. A foot in the door project could be a logo revision. It could be a flyer design. And you know what? I'm going to do this flyer design for you for free. I'm not going to charge you anything. And that creates the relationship with the client. Or you can do it for, you know, half of what you would normally charge and tell them, you know what, just to help you out, I'm going to do this for half of what I would normally charge. Um, just because I like you, I want to work with you and I want to build a relationship. Relationships, relationships, relationships. It's all about relationships. You got to build those. You're not going to make six figures if you don't build relationships, period, hands down. So you got to build those relationships. And so these foot in the foot in the door projects will help you get to that six figure mark uh, by building those relationships. Another way to get to six figures, and this is, I would say, another filler service would be to sell design templates and sell digital products. Um, think of like templates on Etsy. Think of like Photoshop uh, templates on sites like Etsy, sites like um, Creative Market, sites like Free Pick. You can list your products, your digital products on there, and you can make money from those from those type of websites. Basically, like marketplaces where anywhere that someone buys a design asset or design resource, you can make money from it as a designer. So it's really you're not providing an end service to a client but you're creating a product that an end client would use or pretty much anybody can use and purchase from you. So I purchase stuff all the time. Once you get to my level in your career, you kind of learn that you don't have to create everything from scratch. You need to save time because you're doing a lot of different things, right? You got a lot of different projects. So you need to save time on those projects. And what better way to do that than to use templates and resources? I do it all the time and I buy stuff all the time for graphic design, web design, WordPress, all types of stuff. Um, so that's another way that you can kind of fill in the gaps to get to that six figures. All right. So here are some final thoughts. Again, I want to go back to do you need six figures? You got to you got to decide if that level of financial security is what you need. And that's the key financial security. That's what you want. That's really all that you want. That's all that you're looking for is financial security. So if that's six figures, then great. If it's five figures, then that's cool too. Again, the median graphic designer job pays $67,000 a year. That's in the, that's straight in the middle. And so pretty much anywhere in the country, you can, you can make it off $67,000 depending on where you are and depending on your family structure. Like I'm married, been married almost 15 years. I got two kids. I got, you know, house, car, insurance, life insurance. I got a lot of stuff, right? So six figures is just the minimum for me. Like I'm, I'm beyond the six figure level and I need to be beyond the six figure level in order to have the type of lifestyle that I want to have for my family and for my kids. So I have defined what my paradise life is and what what financial security looks like for me. And so you need to do that for yourself. 
Another thing I would say is don't try to do it all. Just pick something, do it for, you know, three months straight and see how you like it. And if at the end of those 90 days you don't like it or it's not something that really excites you and makes you want to wake up in the morning, then you don't have to do it. For me, I know that I don't like designing flyers and I do not design flyers for anyone as a graphic designer. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much you pay me. I will not design a flyer because it's not exciting. It's not fun. It's just like grueling, busy work for me. And I'm just not going to do it. I will outsource it to one of my designers or delegate it to someone else. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, and I learned that. So now I stick to my niche, my niche, niche, however you say the word. I stick to that. I stick to what I know. And, um, you know, what I'm saying I just I just move forward in that and move forward in confidence because I know that I'm a goat and I know that I can design anything. But being a goat means that, you know, who you are and you're confident in that and you're going to stay in your lane and you're going to dominate that lane and be the greatest at what you do. And the last thing I would say, just a little tidbit is to make sure you post your work on social media. Listen. You're not going to get to six figures if you're not visible. If people don't know you and if people don't uh, be able to connect with you and see your work, if you don't have a personal brand, you're not going to make six figures. If you're not promoting yourself on social media, you're not going to make six figures. This is coming from someone who makes multiple six figures a year. And I'm telling you what it requires. And so you have to be on social media. You don't have to plaster your face everywhere, but you do need to put your work out there so that people can see and people know who you are and they can connect with you. So that is how you make six figures a year. That's certainly not all of the ways that can add up to make those six figures. But I hope that this video was informative for you. I hope that you was able to pick up uh, a few things here and there that'll help you and to motivate and encourage you to, you know what I'm saying, just get to that next level. And, you know, the, the very, very last thing I'll say is you have to believe. You have to believe in yourself. And if you're searching on YouTube and searching on Quora and, you know, Reddit, how to make six figures, you have to believe that you can make six figures. You have to believe that you're worthy of earning six figures a year. You have to believe that it's possible for you. And anything that you believe, will be. Just remember that anything you believe will be. If you believe it's difficult to make six figures, then guess what? It's going to be difficult for you to make six figures. But if you believe that, oh, man, I can do this. This is easy to do. I can accomplish this. It may take me becoming a different person, but I can do it. Then guess what? That's your reality. And that's what it's going to be. Anything you believe will be. All right. So that's all. If you got something out of it, leave a comment below. If you have a question about something, leave a comment below. And I'm more than happy to, um, you know, to chop it up with you in the comments and to provide more information. What other topics would you like me to cover on the Design Go podcast? Please let me know. All right. Until next time, please like the video if it was helpful. Subscribe to the channel and the podcast if you want more content like this. And let's make it better by going up together. Peace. This is a production of 1217 Media.